All right, welcome to another Fabric Tip Friday. Um, normally I get the ideas for these uh, little Fabric Tip deals from when people call. And the main thing I want to do is get the information out to especially the new guys. And I hate to use terms that we a lot of us take for granted that some people uh, don't, don't understand. They don't ask what we mean by that. And what I'm going to talk about today is when we talk about a Zon cup or checking your consistency or viscosity of your paint. Uh, the Zon cup, what we're talking about is a way of measuring. Uh, when, when I made all of the spray outs, every one of these colors, I had 10 sheets that got cut up into thousands of these and made this color chart for Airtech. I just went through each time with a pint of paint and just did a straight three to one to one or whatever. And if you look at them, some of them are perfectly slick. And then some of them, if you get to the lights, you can say, well, that didn't lay down the same. What happens is, is different colors, the weights of the pigments are different and different colors act a little different. And it, it doesn't, don't really matter what kind of paint you're painting, uh, whether it be a white, or I've noticed a lot of times a metallic, you have to be careful. Maybe don't thin those as much as you do some of the solid colors because they'll act a little different, could run, or metallics could move around a little easier. There's a whole little little trick to spraying metallics. But what I'm talk, gonna talk about is, is uh, if you started painting and you, know, you notice one day that the paint just laid out perfect and you really don't know what you did different. A lot of times, if you'll get an understanding of what you're painting, I've mixed up, I'm fixing to go shoot a boot cow in just a little bit, and I thought I'd go ahead and do this video. What this mix is, is three to one to one. And I've had times that you'd only go a half part. The book says a half part up to one. I've had times that people would talk about going all the way to two. Now you can start to bleach out your colors or, or spread your colors with your reducer to the point that you need no more coats and you get into a tricky situation especially with yellows or something where you did an elevator and you did three coats on it and you did another elevator and two coats covered fine and you're done they look a little different color because you're stacking yellows and tends to go more red or something so you got to be careful if you're going to over thin it but back to the when we talk about a zon cup this is a Zon 4, I believe. I just went next door to the restoration shop. And what a cup is, it's got a calibrated hole. This is not a Zon brand, but it's equivalent to a Zon 4. Now they have twos and threes and these different calibrations. The key is, is if you call in to me or whatever, we need to make sure we're talking apples to apples. And sometimes I'm a little concerned if, if it's an actual Zon, you're several hundred dollars versus a a $9 knockoff that's a plastic one or whatever. Uh, it's a calibrated hole, but if you have one of these, I'm probably gonna start handling them and, and giving them to people as they, uh, as they buy paint. Uh, there is one brand that makes a small plastic one, but the key is it doesn't really matter the brand or whatever, as long as what you're using is the same thing you use every time. You wanna really clean them. I had a representative talk about how he had a customer that kept getting weird numbers. And when he went by to test everything, his Zon cup was so eat up with paint that the hole was halfway filled in with dried paint. Well, that's not even a calibrated situation. So you wanna really wash it. You don't wanna poke nothing in there to clean that hole. You could recalibrate that hole. That's that's a calibrated size. And what what I'm gonna show is, is what that's used for. First, I'm just gonna do straight reducer. Because these people, some people, when they give me a real small number like 15 or 16 or 17 on a Zon cup, I can tell right off the bat that they don't have the same numbers I do because you can't get it any thinner than the thinner. Uh, what you do is get you a stopwatch, and what you're going to do is you're going to flood it, and you're, you're going to be ready to pull it out. And when, you, when you're bringing it out, it's going to start running. And we're looking at a timed situation for that to run out. And the thinner the faster it will run out. Well, everybody may be a little quicker on the, the button or whatever, but what you're looking for is, is, is when it's, it's kind of hard to see here, but when the stream is running straight, just as soon as you see that it either quits or starts dripping or start, you know, a lot of times this will just go off. You'll see it actually just probably stop. Yeah, see it just stopped. 
uh, paint will slow down and go into a drip and you'll see it start dripping at the bottom and dripping and moving up. Usually when them drips starts running up that solid stream, when they get about halfway, I hit the key. And I'll just do a test here to just show you. We're gonna check the zone of this reducer. You have the start ready. As soon as you come up, you start it. And you just have your finger and you're just kind of staring at it where it's going in. You might look over in the top to see how kind of how close you are. And when it gets down, toward the bottom, then you can start watching it. And see, I've seen it stop. So that right around 17 seconds. I had a guy call here about six months ago. He says, well, I've thinned the paint down to where my Zon 4 is down to 16 seconds. Well, I knew right off the bat he had a different one or he's done messed his hole up or he's got a bigger one or whatever. And it might be situations, I've tried using this Zon cup on our hard deck floor that we make, the clear that goes over the epoxy. And if you use this to check that, you're, you might as well use a calendar instead of a stopwatch because it's just be like molasses coming out. So I'm sure they got different kinds for different things. All right, we're going to do this. I'm going to stop this and reset it. Now this is me. Now this is just the white that I've normally been painting. And it's, and it's pretty cold out here today. It's probably 35 to 40 degrees. I will, um, uh, I'm not sure what the last time I checked this on a white, I was thinking it was about 22 or 23 seconds, but we're gonna run it down and get it ready. And we'll check this measurement on the white. And as you can see it a lot better, you just kind of watch that. And what, what you'll see is usually you'll see it start, it'll probably make a liar out of me, but you'll see it start dripping at the, as soon as you just see any difference in action, I usually hit it. All right, there's drops. See, that's up to 25.5. And I think when it was 85 degrees, I was seeing this somewhere in the 23 second. You would do several, you may come in at 24, or let's just see how much it varied. That's 25.5. Let me do just one more, see if it was a fluke or how much maybe I was off on watching it. But you could do several averages, but the key is, is once you get down to where you know about how many seconds you like to see the viscosity, the paint gun don't care if it's white, black, silver, blue, purple paint. It doesn't matter. It's all about the consistency. There it is, 24-3. So I'm in the 24 to 25. I probably will go back and add maybe another quarter part reducer to that. And that, that will probably bring that around the 22 to 23. That's just where I like to paint with my paint gun with a 1.4. You may go a 1.3. You may can run it a little thinner, but... That's just, I just hope that just kind of explains so that we don't say the word Zion Cup around people and they don't understand. It's just a way of knowing where we're at. And that would give you, if you got you one of these little cups, if you're doing a lot of different parts, that way every time you mix it, if the temperature changes, let's say you changed color, you might stop. Now this is after it's catalyzed, it's ready to go. That might just give you a little chance to go with a different color. And you say, well, this color is acting a lot thicker or a lot thinner. I may, you know, you may want to start with your mixture down as low a part on reducer and then inch it up to where you're used to painting with that same. So if this gun does real well with 22 to 25, 24 Zion cup, that's what I want all my colors to be. So I hope it helps for just some of the new guys that's not been fooling with it. And you know, you, you take a, a pro, <laughs> I mean, you, you take the guy that does it all the time, you know, he's going to do this right here and he's going to know about where he's at. That's true, but he's not, you know, he, he can't do that and hit it within three or four seconds there. So this is a more of a science, you know, to know just exactly where you're at on your consistency. That way when you spray it out and you're like, well, it ain't laying out like I want. You may be turned up a little high on your gun. You're laying out too much material. You see that a lot with HVLP, but, um, you know, this is just a way to get you a good standard uh, to try to be working out little problems with your paint. Thank you.